In just four minutes, we're going to outline why the Second Vatican Council was called, who was there, what they decided, and how it changed the church. So we better get cracking. Ecumenical councils, or meetings of all of the bishops, are super rare. On average, they happen once every hundred years. They're always called as a response to a crisis or a question. So what was the big deal facing the church in 1959 when John XXIII decided to call a council? In a word, modernism. The world was rapidly changing after World War II in terms of science and culture and ideas about what it means to be human. How was the church going to relate to this new world? The church wasn't in decline, in fact it was booming, but John XXIII expressed a desire to open the windows and let in some fresh air in terms of new ideas and energy. How would the church remain relevant and dynamic in this changing world? There were some new theological ideas that needed to be addressed as well, but they're a bit too technical for this video. So, who was there? Two popes led Vatican II because, well, John XXIII died in 1963, one year in. Paul VI took it to conclusion. They were joined by around 2,000 bishops and leaders of major Catholic orders. These guys made the big decisions. They were assisted by a bunch of theological experts, mainly priests. Alongside all these guys, a number of lay people, including 20 women, were brought in as auditors and advisors. Finally, non-Catholic Christians were invited to observe, including Orthodox and Protestant Christians. So, what did they decide? I'm only going to give a few highlights here because, well, they came up with an awful lot in three years. Firstly, they didn't change any beliefs of the church. They just changed how some of these beliefs were expressed. The first, they highlighted the universal call to holiness. This means everyone, of every rank, is responsible for being and building the church. It was an emphasis on ordinary Catholics rather than on just priests and bishops. Second, the church should seek greater unity with all Christians and seek peace with other religions. Third, the church should seek to be involved in the modern world through advances such as communications technology. Fourth, the church's nature was re-evaluated. It must be a light to the world, bringing the truth of Christ to all. Fifth, scripture was emphasised as important. In particular, all Catholics, lay and religious, were encouraged to read the scripture for themselves. That said, Vatican II emphasised that tradition was also important. Finally, the Mass was emphasised as being super important, with a focus on lay participation. That's ordinary Catholics. So, how did it change the Church? The most visible changes for ordinary Catholics were found in the Mass. For example, most priests now face the people when celebrating Mass, emphasising the role of the lay people. Priests were permitted to say the Mass in the local language, rather than in Latin. Latin is still the official language of the Church and the liturgy, though. There are more scripture readings, and these are read by lay people. And lay people were tasked with preparing and leading prayers, in the prayers of the faithful, and in assisting at communion. All of these changes were designed to more fully involve ordinary Catholics in the Mass. Other changes included a softening of language when talking about non-Catholics and a more welcoming attitude towards cooperating with other Christian groups. The Church adopted a clearer anti-war stance as a result of the catastrophe of World War II. And finally, Vatican II has also started a whole bunch of arguments, as will no doubt be seen in the comments section below this video. There are those who say we should pursue the spirit of the Council, meaning we should be more open to the world and less concerned with tradition. In contrast, there are those who say we should accept the literal decisions of the Council, but that tradition is important and should be preserved. So, hopefully you now know why the council was called, who was there, what they decided, and how it changed the church.